Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. I'd like to discuss a recent article I read that talks about the extended release, um, extended support updates for Windows 7 specific. It appears that there is a, what's called a bypass that's been discovered that'll allow users to run the updates without having to pay the Microsoft contract fee. These fees get pretty expensive as they range from $25 to $50 per year, depending on what SKU of Windows you're on, whether that be Enterprise or Pro, Pro being a bit more expensive. And then it doubles every year. So the second year would be 50 and 100, and the third year would be 100 and $200 respectively. After three year mark, Microsoft is not really saying what they're gonna do, but it's very likely that they will not continue running updates for these products. This is very similar to a Windows XP up to, uh, bypass that was discovered where a registry hack would allow a user to trick the system into thinking it was running on Microsoft Embedded, which it also looks like the Microsoft's not really being forward about how long the embedded solution for Windows 7 is going to be running on updates itself as well. Uh, the Windows XP one just ended in April of 2019, so it was a good five years after the normal support date for Windows XP, which ended in April of 2014. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want to be running XP through April of last year, but people were able to get continued security updates through that time frame. And obviously, if there's like an embedded system or some production things that are just like basically an appliance that don't ever need to be upgraded, uh, you don't fix it if it ain't broke, right? So a lot of these applications run old software that can't be updated either, or there aren't any updates for it and don't work on current uh, or modern PC hardware or software even. So looking at this, the history of that doesn't, I don't see anything that indicates that Microsoft ever patched the ability to, or prevented people from having the ability to run embedded, um, the embedded software updates. So it's just, it's possibly a better time before Microsoft decides to patch this out of Windows 7. We don't know. Um, but it doesn't look like they did anything for Windows XP. I guess they just kind of let people go on. Even as late as May 23rd of 2019, Microsoft was releasing updates for Windows XP for the remote desktop as there was a pretty significant flaw that would allow a remote code execution on, tar on a target machine. Obviously, it's a pretty big deal, but to be releasing it even after the final extended support uh, in April was kind of a big surprise. They haven't released any patches really since then. Since the last update that was supposedly the final update for Windows 7, Microsoft did introduce a bug with the background where if you set it to stretched mode, it would cause background to go black. They've already released a patch for that and an additional patch after that to fix some other issue that was introduced by that. This just shows you how complex this operating system is and even doing some mundane fixes such as fixing a background issue, a background display issue causes another issue that they have to patch. I'm not sure if they will release more updates for it. It's very possible. Obviously, they'll be releasing updates for the next three years for people that pay for them. And if this bypasses anything to be talking about, then people can be updated for the next three years without having to pay anything. Now, obviously, I wouldn't suggest you running any production machines as Microsoft could easily patch this out at any time. However, they did not do that with Windows XP, and they are being a little cagey about what the update cycle is for any Windows 7 embedded devices themselves. They could have an extended date kind of like the Windows uh, XP embedded, but we don't know what those dates are. They do, they just kind of vaguely say that they have different end of support dates. Either way, let's hope that no one's really using Windows 7 much past January or February this year. If you do, hopefully the bypass can get you through just until you were able to upgrade to Windows 10 or if you have a machine that can upgrade to Windows 10. Hopefully you can upgrade soon to a machine that can support it. I myself have personally upgraded several machines that are one even from 2008 that started with Windows Vista. I've upgraded that all the way to Windows 10, the most current version. So there are a lot of machines that are compatible with Windows 10. Uh, I haven't really run into many that haven't. Mostly it's just been, if it's something you try to preserve the settings or the files, or the uh, applications are installed that I run into some issues, but if you do like a fresh install, I have not had any issues. I have not had any issues with the running of the licensing for it. A lot of times, Microsoft will still activate Windows 7 if you do the upgrade assistant. Now, a place that I work at has enterprise licensing with that the, the keys do work for Windows 7 and Windows 10, so I haven't run into that at all, but neither of my per none of my personal machines have I ever run into it. Even after the, the end of the free upgrade from Windows 7 to 10, I have not run any issues. I don't have any problems with Windows 10. I know some people like Windows 7 more. Uh, thankfully, you don't have to worry about Windows 8 as much if you're going from 7. I know that was kind of a mixed bag. I didn't hate it too much, but it did cause a lot of issues, especially until Windows 8.1 came out. Hope you guys thought this was informational and helpful to you in some way. Maybe you learned something. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts or anything down in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. This is Ian.